Ladies and gentlemen, I turned the uh, air off and it's been off for about 30 minutes. It's 96 degrees inside and 93 degrees outside. That's right. Got the front door open because I ain't turning no more air on tonight. I just don't feel like it. I'm not hot, but it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just wanted to take the time. Look, I know that the information being produced on this channel is being duplicated on other people's channels, and they're portraying it as if they came up with the information first or that they were talking about it before me. Yeah, right. But I don't care. But you're talking about it, so that means you do care. Well, I don't care because I tell you where I'm getting the information from. They can't tell you where they got it from because they definitely didn't study it. See, most of the things I talk about are the secret, the stuff that you're not going to find in literature. Just like I've been telling you guys the all caps name is a trap, right? I just wasn't using the word construct. I, I understood it was a legal construct. I mean, you guys hear it in the cartoons all the time. They talk about the construct. You guys don't understand. They construct it. The creature we refer to as the all caps name, the so-called straw man. Then they say, well, you are a sovereign citizen if you believe in a straw man. They just say it. They don't prove that it doesn't exist. The court, well, we've already decided. Who decided? Who the, are you to decide something like that? You need to prove, not decide. Nobody asked you for your stupid decision or opinion. See, the courts say they decided. They haven't said that it's been established in law. They say that they've established it. But under what jurisdiction are you establishing this junk? You don't have the right to establish anything. The courts don't establish nothing. Go ahead and look in law and see if the courts get to establish something. They don't get to create nothing. But they did create constructive trust. They created these artificial constructs, these corporations that are fictitious entities. That's what they created. But I didn't do this video to talk about that. But I, as I said, you're going to get information like this, and then other people are going to start talking about it, and I don't care. Those of you who are at this channel, you know where they're getting it from, whether they give me the credit or not. But you see me, if I hear somebody say something, I'll tell you, hey, you know what, such and such, such and such mentioned this, and I need to let y'all know that it came from such and such, such and such. And if it wasn't for him mentioning it, I wouldn't have recalled it. And so now I can talk about, you know, you, you'll hear me do something like that. These individuals want to take all the credit. But they don't have the lawyers and judges watching their channel hearing what they're talking about. Talking about the information they talk about on their channel. But we have judges and attorneys talking about the things that I talk about on my channel. Talking about me. I'm sorry. I I remember there was a, a character in my neighborhood. His name was Tidy Bowl. Tidy Bowl was a gang member right about my age. Tidy Bowl. I didn't like Tidy Bowl too much because he killed the mechanic. The one, the mechanic I told you guys. Um, well, no, he's alleged to have killed him. Um, he's alleged to have killed the mechanic. It was common news around the neighborhood that he did it, but the police didn't know who did it. You know what I'm saying? Um and I don't believe in hearsay, but I didn't like Tidy Bull anyway. He was a gang member, and he was an ignorant gang member. I'll say it. It's the truth. In my opinion, that's who he was. But he was all right. He didn't cause me any problems. But I walked into the gym one day, and I'm talking to a couple people I know, and he goes, we were just talking about you. I'm like, really? I'm not even hearing you guys are talking about me? He said, yeah. We were talking about how the fact you're too strong. If we got into a fight with you, we wouldn't fight you. We'd have to shoot you to kill you because you're just too strong. Ladies and gentlemen, he was right. I am exceptionally strong. When you look at me, I'm not. I'm a lot stronger than what I look, even with this stupid disease. That's what the disease did for me. And he was correct. Um, the last thing I remember in an incident that happened in that same gym I don't remember it at all. I just remember waking up, not from the floor, because somebody knocked me out, like, in Friday, but from 
eight men having to hold me down. I try to keep that under control. It's called rage. And I try to stay away from rage as best I can. I try to keep myself under control and not get to that point. There is a point of anger that I can't control myself. That's why I have worked very hard to keep that under control. I stay away from people who display anger. I don't allow angry people around me. Okay? If you hear me sounding angry, that's just the sound. That's just me just acting out. That's not me being angry. It takes a whole lot to make me angry. And in that situation, somebody hit me from behind. Well, in my neighborhood, I've always grown up, never let somebody hit you from behind. As a matter of fact, the person who hits somebody from behind is a, well, I was watching, it's called The Acolyte. And in there, they talk constantly about how a Jedi never strikes a person from behind. You see, that was tradition, never hitting anybody from behind. It uh, was said to be cowardly. And they say the same thing in the Acolyte. Well, that's the way I grew up. But anyway, enough about that. I don't talk about it. I don't talk about the incident. It's just talking about Tidy Bowl um, and him mentioning how they were talking about me. Ladies and gentlemen, everywhere I go, people talk about me. That's why I stop worrying about what people have to say about me. They can say whatever they want. They can call me whatever they want. They can call me whatever names they want. I'm certain you guys have seen the videos on YouTube where people have taken the time to talk about me. Oh, look at that. Trump is visibly emotional <laughs> making a public appearance. Oh, God. I mean, after such a performance, it was... <sighs> this is what I told my people, ladies and gentlemen. If the assassination attempt, and I did a video, but the video I did right after the shooting, uh, YouTube definitely would have taken it down. I might still put it up, but it was done the night of the shooting. And I talked about all of the things that was out of place. Okay, you had Secret Service on the roof with their rifle, uh, with their um, long range rifle. And if you see, go back and watch the footage. The Secret Service agent jumps. Go ahead, go back and watch the footage. He jumps to the side. And then he loads, gets ready to start firing. But the guy was up there for some 20 minutes with his gun. And maybe the Secret Service, maybe their excuses, they thought he was one of them. But, you know, they're coordinated. So if a person goes up on a roof, they're going to let people know, hey, who's that on uh, building number blah, 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 blah. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, that's me. I decided to move. What do you mean you decided to move? You didn't tell anybody you were moving? Why are you out of position? They would have done all of that, but they didn't do that. <sighs> Got to remember, Secret Services ran like the military because they're mostly former military or current military personnel. So they ran like the military. So what was going on that day? Then, wait, the person is shooting with a rifle and he nicks his ear? Do you know what type of skill it takes to hit somebody in the ear? But not in the ear. No, just grazed the ear. They grazed the ear. Didn't cut off a huge chunk. They grazed his ear. Lord have mercy. Well, anyway, back to the reason why I'm doing this particular video. I don't want to make it too long. I'm getting ready to eat my food because I'm hungry. And my food, ooh-wee, I so enjoy it. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's a wooden spoon. Um, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, I don't use plastic to cook anymore. It's either porcelain or wooden spoon. And the stainless steel pans. I don't use cast iron because I just, the thing, I have muscular dystrophy and my wrists are a problem. So the cast iron, uh, picking that junk up all the time, nah, ain't going to do that to my wrist. Anyway, getting back to the story. During the consult, a lot of people get a lot of information. As a matter of fact, one guy, he had a child support issue. And the child is 21 years old, and he's still paying arrears that that child is receiving payments, but not from him. They're just receiving payments from the child support department. And 
So I told him, because he says he doesn't believe the child is his, and he's always had that. He says the child doesn't look nothing like him, and when he confronts the mother, she just cries. Not crying because he, <laughs> he is upset with the fact that he doesn't believe it's his child. The conversation is you were sleeping with other people. So why is it you chose me? That's the conversation. So I simply told him, you're going to have to sue the state. You have to sue CPS. You're going to have to sue the mother, and you're going to have to sue the child. The child for a paternity test, because they won't do a paternity test voluntarily, so he's got to sue the child in order to get the judge to order a paternity test. Because if he wants to continue to receive the funds, he's going to contest or challenge the jurisdiction of the child, of the mother, of CPS, and of the state regarding this child support thing. Also talked about how the state doesn't have the right to collect child support on behalf of the federal government under the Social Security Act. Impossible. The Social Security Act does not give government the right over any use. Okay, and it doesn't give government the right to contract with the state to collect something they claim is owed by you. Federal government has no jurisdiction over your family. That's a state thing. So they cannot confer jurisdiction through the state because of sovereignty. The people haven't surrendered that right to the federal government. Those are your catch-22s with that. And so we were able to talk about that and to go into detail. And then to confirm exactly what I was telling him, that was just a consult today. That was only one of the issues, and that wasn't even the main issue. The main issues were several other things, uh, because he bought a vehicle, and he endorsed the promissory note because they wanted him to do it online. He says, no, I want you to send me the actual document. I want to sign this document. So they sent him the actual document because he said he wanted to read what was on it and everything, and he signed it, paid to the order of, and he put the bank's name on there, and they've ignored it. Well, we can prove that it's not a promissory note anymore. What he gave them was a negotiable instrument because he endorsed it. And once he endorsed that promissory note, it became a negotiable instrument. So that was our main focus, suing them for fraud. Why? Because they're claiming to be a debt collector because they've already been paid. They are a bank. They should know what to do with a promissory note because they received it. And they did not timely dishonor it. In fact, to this day, they have not dishonored the promissory note. So they're stuck with it. That was our consult. Well, I told him that as of today, prior to his consult, that individuals will not be allowed to communicate with me anymore after the consult. See, ladies and gentlemen, instead of the hour and 45 minutes, definitely the consults were originally for one hour. Then I literally felt sorry for people, so I gave them two hours and didn't charge them anything extra, just gave it to them extra for free, no additional charge. And they were still getting the same valuable information from me, just a lot more. And after the consult, ladies and gentlemen, individuals were allowed to email me. I had to stop the email because that was becoming monotonous. Then they were allowed to communicate with me through the system that we do the consults on. But many of them were having conversations with me. I don't have time for conversations, ladies and gentlemen. You can ask a question, but you can't ask one question after the other question after the other question. I'm not going to help you do your research. That I refuse to do. Well, that's what they were That's what they were expecting. That's what they were doing. It got to the point to where I couldn't breathe because I was constantly, look, I don't mind people contacting me for one or two questions, but five or six in a row? No. Here's the thing. Every day I'm thinking about something else. My mind is on other things. I have other things that I'm having to deal with right now. I'm having Amazon interfere with something that I'm, I've am i got to sue these idiots, and i got to sue them the right way. Now, I've already filed a lawsuit against them, and they, they, they're, they're powerful. They blocked it. That's right. They didn't block it outright. They just, you know, paid off some people to ignore it. Well, they're not going to ignore me this time. Because I know exactly how to get their attention. I don't give up about Amazon, but I'm going to make sure they they give up about me. Okay, I promise you, I'm going to make sure of that. So, we're stopping people from communicating with me after their consult. Uh, not a punishment, just too much. All right, that's it. 15 minutes, y'all. Gotta go.